Hi, welcome to DrSecrets.com. I'm DR, and today we're going to talk about ganglia. So this is Jenna, and she woke up this morning and noticed that there was this painless bump on the back of her hand after going for an extended hike yesterday over a lot of rough terrain um, with several slips and falls and using some walking sticks. So she obviously wants to know, what is this uh, bump? So she goes in to see her doctor, and they tell her it's a ganglion or pleural ganglia. So what causes a ganglion and what is it? Basically a ganglia is a cyst that's filled with fluid and to understand why it occurs you have to understand first of all what structures it usually affects and it's typically either a joint so a joint is just basically an area where two bones um, intercalate so move against each other or it occurs along uh, ligaments. To understand why you have to see the structure. With a joint you have a capsule around it called the synovial membrane and one of the functions of that synovial membrane is to produce a liquid called synovial fluid which is almost like a lubricant or an oil. It actually looks oily if, if you ever get to look at it. And the purpose for that lubricant is to allow the joints to slip past each other without rubbing. Otherwise, walking would be intolerable, moving your fingers would be intolerable. And for a ligament, it's same same idea again. In your hand and uh, toes, the hand and toes aren't actually moved by muscles within the fingers. The muscles are actually higher up, say like in your forearm, and then it moves your fingers using these puppet strings. I don't know if you can see when I move my finger there, that, that string. So in order to allow these strings to be able to move or glide freely, each of them has a, a sheath around it. So we'll call that a little sheath, like a straw. And then the, the puppet string runs down the, the center of it. And the lining of that um, sheath also produces something like synovial fluid to allow the puppet string to glide in and out of, of its casing. Now, what causes a ganglion in both cases is something going wrong with the integrity of, of, that, um, of that covering, that sheath. So what it causes is what we call a hernia, or a little outpouching of the surface of that structure. So I'm just going to draw it on here quickly. So here's a little pouch, and here's a little pouch. Now unfortunately, the lining inside of that pouch is still going to want to try to produce what it was supposed to originally, which is the synovial fluid. So that's what causes the space that opens up to fill up with, with this fluid, which keeps it kind of turgid and hard. So when you press on a ganglia, you'll feel it feels really firm, but not hard like how a bone feels. It feels more like, um, say like the tip of your nose, rather than your bony like how your forehead does. Okay, so now you understand what causes it. Um, a lot of the time, the reason for the loss of integrity of the lining is from repetitive wear and tear. So the most common place that it tends to occur is on the back of the wrist. And I actually have one, and I've had one for about three years. So if I flex my wrist here, I don't know if you could see that bump that suddenly pops out there. Right on the back there. I don't know if you could appreciate that. But that bump is a ganglion. And I've had mine for about three years. But they can also occur on the reverse side or the dorsum of the wrist as well, and they can also occur on, on the feet. But the most common place is this area here, where with a lot of repetitive um, wrist use, you can get fraying of either the joint capsule or the um, one of those uh, uh, ligaments. My case was caused by uh, one day doing some reverse curls, which I'm not used to doing, and I think that frayed the, the lining of one of my joints here. No, do you have to do anything for them? Uh, absolutely not, in general. Sometimes though they can get large enough and just by bad luck be next to a nerve. In a case like that where it's pressing against a digital nerve, it can cause a lot of pain. Cases like that you do need to do something about. But most cases um, people just want them removed because cosmetically they feel they look like a freak and they dislike seeing it, even though most other people looking at them won't be able to tell that they even have it. So if you did want to get rid of it, there's uh, two different methods, well actually three different methods, or maybe four different things. One is just ignore it, which is what I've done with my own, and the other three, one is uh, almost like an urban legend or an old wives tale, uh, where in 
books or on the internet, you'll, you'll see something about taking a big book, like a Bible, and basically taking it and smacking it on top of the ganglion. Uh, what that does is it ruptures the ganglion under the skin. Um, I have no idea if that is effective in the long run. It sounds painful to me and probably should be reserved for shows like Jackass. The other two methods is what we do um, in traditional medicine. One is, and I've done this many, many times for other people, is you basically take a needle, large bore, stick it into the cyst. Oops, sorry. Imagine that the cyst is not on that side, it was on this side. Don't want to affect your normal um, sac. So if the cyst was here, you inject a, a needle into it. As I said, a large bore needle. And very simply, you extract, or what we call aspirate, suck the fluid out of out of the um, offending cyst. Um, the fluid usually looks like um, like an oily, viscous, straw-colored uh, material. Uh, once that's done, then I push back in another chemical called cortisone, which is basically a, a natural or a artificially derived um, mirror of a naturally produced um, anti-inflammatory hormone. So that steroid helps to prevent the area from, from uh, trying to fill back up again. I usually find that this method um, works pretty well for the vast majority of cases. Out of all the many that I've done over my career so far, I've seen uh, two which um, didn't permanently stick. And one of them I simply repeated and I haven't heard anything back from the individual for probably the last four years now, so I assume it worked. Uh, the other case, the person, by the time I saw it, they were moving and I didn't have enough time to repeat it for them. So they got lost to follow up, so I'm not sure how they turned out. Um, in cases, if, um, if you ever came across one of the ones where it's actually painful and causing pressure symptoms, then what I would more recommend is instead of that method, or if you had one that you tried the cortisone but it kept recurring over time, is to send you to see either someone in plastics or orthopedics to surgically go in uh, slit the skin, go in, trim off the, the offending um, excess tissue, uh, remove the fluid, close it back up, and end the story. So, in general, uh, ganglia are not harmful. Uh, they're generally nothing to worry about. I've had one for probably about three years now, and I'm still going. I'm fine. And that is uh, ganglia in a nutshell. Thanks for watching, and uh, stay well, and don't worry about it if you have a ganglion.